Hi guys, good morning. Happy Sunday to everyone. I hope you're doing fine um, since GCQ na raba. So today what we're going to talk about is a life by His will, a life by the Spirit of God. But before we start, let me just ask you, sa tanan yung plan sa inyong life, do you ask God? Do you consult God? Like for example, finances. For us, sa ako sa kong wife, um, for us, as soon as we receive our sweldo, we always pray, you ask God, Lord, um, help us to be a good steward with with your provision, with with kaninga sweldo. And if nami ma-receive ma -receive nga gift, we usually ask God, Lord, para amo ni Lord, or or para kang kinsa ni Lord. So, we usually consult God in everything. But I'm just going to ask you guys, um, how about your relationship? Do you consult God? Because the reason why I ask this, these questions because as a Christian, our life revolves by the will of God. This is where we can actually evaluate our lives. And we can ask this question, am I living by His will? Or am I not living by His will? But before we start on our reading, on our um, on our Sunday service. Let me just pray for you guys. Lord, we thank you and we're so grateful, Lord God, that we're able to do this virtually or balag online, Lord. That we're able to build a relationship with you and know you more through your word, through the Bible. Father, we come before your throne, Lord God, as sinners. And we ask for forgiveness for all the sins that we have done. Lord, we ask that you guide us. We pray for wisdom, Lord God, that I will be able to share who you are and magnify your greatness, Lord God, through your word. Help me, Father. Thank you so much, Lord God, for letting me have this opportunity, Lord, to share your word. Lord, I pray all these things by your will, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. As we start, if you have your Bibles with you, um, try to open it um, in Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, um, verse 1. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. If you are there, let's read it all together. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful men to be a sin offering. And so He condemned sin in sinful men in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature but according to the Spirit. Verse 5, those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what the nature desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who lives in you. May God be praised for the reading of His Word. As we start, I want you to go back to first the, the first verse. You see, the Bible speaks not only about the good news, but it also talks about the bad news. Now, what is the bad news? As this verse started with the good news for those who are in Christ, that therefore there is now no condemnation. The bad news is the direct opposite. That therefore there will be condemnation for those who are not in Christ. 
And as you read this verse, take note how Paul started this with the word therefore. This means that this is the result of something or, or this is a conclusion of what he said previously. And if you watch last Sunday's preaching, I, I think Pastor Gab have explained it. Or if you can read the previous chapters 1 to 7 in Romans, you will know that Paul clearly explained that through faith alone, they are justified. That someone on their behalf paid the penalty of sin and therefore, they are sanctified. Then Paul said, said this on the first verse that therefore, there is now no condemnation. Condemnation means to be judged or once judged, you will receive punishment. And condemnation in Greek, it's katakrima, meaning to judge someone as guilty and subject to punishment. And the word no here is used means a complete stop, a complete cessation or a cessation. So no condemnation. Paul was saying that this is an assurance. That since they are justified through faith alone, that someone paid for the penalty of sin, that they are considered sanctified, there will be no condemnation. These words only means you are free from the punishment of sin, but also stating that no amount of work can declare you justified, but only if you are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, there is now no condemnation that they will no longer be judged and are subject to punishment for their sins and their future sins. Okay? That this is an assurance that is if you are in Christ. A life of assurance if we are in Christ. In Christ means you believe, you trust, and you follow His ways. You believe that He died and rose again, that He is your Lord, And you trust that what He has done on that cross paid the penalty of sin and that He is your Savior and you follow His will for your life. And we will talk more about what does it mean to be in Christ, to be in the Spirit. I just want to ask you this question. Does that mean that I will no longer sin once I will be in Christ? This was actually discussed on the previous chapter on last Sunday. And Paul even made himself the, the, the example of this question. He answered this with, Wretched man that I am. And I'm going to say this to you too. What a wretched man I am. But thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. During our temporary life here on earth, let me just tell you this. We will not be able to live or attain a perfect, sinless life. It does not end until the day we come before the Lord. But I know and that I can be assured that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. His grace and His mercy are new every morning. And to tell you honestly, with all the things that I have done, I deserve God's wrath. And if I tried to imagine it, I would have said, Lord, can I just take your place? Because that was supposed to be me. I should have suffered and died for my own sins. If you try to ask me, I don't deserve God's love. What I deserve is God's wrath. But yet Jesus Christ is telling us, no, He has given us hope. And this hope is renewed every single day. Because no one can know when will our life ends. And if you come to think of it, if the penalty of sin is death and every day we sin, every day we deserve God's wrath. Every day we can die. But every morning you wake up. It's a new morning, a hope to know Him and to live in Him as He lives in us. In Him we have a life of assurance. And on the next verse, we will talk about the reason for this assurance, for this life. He said, because through Christ Jesus, we have learned that only through Jesus Christ, there is now no condemnation if we are in Him. When we say that you are in Christ Jesus, as Paul said in Romans chapter 6, let me just read that to you in Romans chapter 6, verse 
3 to 5 or verse 3. Romans chapter 6 verse 3. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? We were therefore buried with Him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with Him like this in His death, we will certainly also be united with Him in His resurrection. All of us have been baptized into Christ. And having been baptized into His death, if you try to imagine baptism, the moment that you are submerged into the water symbolizes the death of Jesus Christ. That is the penalty of sin. In the same way as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, you are also raised from the water so that we might be able to live, to walk in a renewed life. The old was gone and the new has come. A renewed life, a transformed life. Now, a pastor once asked me, how will the people know that the Bible is true, that what you believe in is true, just by looking at you, just by observing your life? And then he said this, transformation. Without transformation, what you believe in, ang imong pagtuo, walay bili. Let's try to evaluate ourselves. Transformation comes when we truly believe, when we truly have faith in Christ. By this, through faith, we are one in Christ. If we are one in Christ, it means it will show in our lives. So let us try to evaluate ourselves. Am I really in Christ? Is Christ really in me? The only person who can answer this question is you. The only person who can evaluate your heart, your action, is you. If you truly believe that we are one in Christ. You will also believe that by His power, you have the ability to obey God. By His power, you have the ability to walk away from sin. If you find things in your life that is not of God, that is that will not glorify God, then repent. Ask for forgiveness. As what I've said a while ago, we are given hope every single day. The moment that you wake up in the morning, you are given hope. As long as kaginhawa pa ta. Repentance is not just saying sorry, but it's turning away from sin and turning to God. If mayingan ka nga, tao ramang gugko mo, magbalik-balik akong sala, mo magbalik rapong kong buhat sa akong sala. Ang kana magbalik-balik ka sala, tinuyuan mo na. If you truly believe in Jesus Christ and His power that you are in Him and He is in you, you can always choose to repent and ask God, Lord, tabangi ko, help me, Lord. If ikaw ang naadiri, Lord, unsa man imong buhaton, teach me to do it, Lord. The very real testimony is the testimony that can be seen in your life. Without transformation, your testimony can become useless. Why believe? As what Paul said, the law of the Spirit set us free, set you free. Paul was referring to the Holy Spirit. That we are now free from the bondage of sin and its consequence. But even if we are already free, our temporary life here on earth will continue to be attacked by the enemy. And as you try to do what the Holy Spirit leads you to do, wants us to do, we become the frontliners. And as the same as the frontliners who are battling COVID, they are the ones who first encounters the enemy. They are the ones who will first receive the attacks. And I encourage everyone to pray for them, to pray for our frontliners. Not only that our not only for our frontliners against COVID, but also our frontliners who are faithfully and ob- obediently following God, who are who are continuing the work even in this time of pandemic, who are trying to reach out souls, who are sharing that this assurance can be shared to everyone, can be given to everyone as soon as they know that they are already in Christ, as soon as they be baptized, as soon as they repent. And on the next verse, for what the law was powerless, the following verses actually is an explanation or reason as to how God set us free from the bondage of sin and death. 
it started describing the law of sin and death that it was powerless. The law of sin and death can magnify or mapakita kung unsa ta ka makakasala that we will always fail because of our sinful nature. And it was powerless to save us from its penalty. It was also powerless to change us or transform our lives or live a holy life. What it can, what it can do is that it can show how sinful we are. The law was there actually to guide us, but we cannot complete it because of our sinful nature. So what God did on the next verse, He said, God did by sending His own Son to be a sin offering. God is good and in His goodness, He cannot allow evil. He cannot allow something that contradicts His goodness. So in order to satisfy His wrath against sin, Someone will need to pay the penalty. Someone who can complete the law. That means to say that someone is Jesus Christ, His one and only Son. God sent His Son in the likeness of sinful men. In our likeness, for all have sinned and fall short for the glory of God. As sinful men, we deserve condemnation. As sinful men, we deserve God's wrath. But Jesus was condemned for our sin. Jesus received that wrath in behalf of us. He was our substitute in front of our God. And then Paul continued, And so he condemned sin in sinful man in order that the righteous of the law might be fully met in us. And this is not this is not because of justification of works that we need to meet the requirements of the law in order to receive salvation. No, it's not. But instead, it's sanctification. God's action sanctified us, cleansed us, that we are given a new life, a new life to live a life of holiness, a hope. And this is the power of the law of the spirit of life that is not in the law of sin and death. Jesus fulfilled the law for us. If we believe this in front of God, what God sees in us is Jesus Christ. This statement actually refers to us believers who do not live according to the sinful nature but according to the Spirit. refers to those who are in Christ. That if we believe that we are in Christ and Christ in us, we choose to live according to the Spirit, according to To his will. And living is a continuous action. It's a habit or behavior or a lifestyle, a changed life, a transformed life. Paul even count, counseled the Ephesians. Let me just read that to you. The Ephesians on, on, on not living as the Gentiles do. Ephesians 4.17. Ephesians 4.17. This section start entitled as living as children of light. Verse 17, So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. If we truly believe that we are in Christ, we also believe that by His power, we are able to walk by the Spirit. We are able to live according to the Spirit, according to the will of God. A life of assurance in accordance to the Spirit. As Paul said to the Ephesians, you must no longer live as the Gentiles. Forget the past. Forget the things that you knew. Unlearn those things. Remove all those things. If you really believe in Jesus Christ, believe that by His power, you can walk by His will. A life of assurance that is according to the Spirit. As what Peter said, again, another another Bible verse. What? 1 Peter 1 Peter 1.15 115. Let me just read that to you. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. In this life, it's going to be a constant battle. But if you really believe in Jesus Christ, if you truly believe that you are in him and he is in you, you will choose to fight knowing that a God who has saved you is fighting with you. So verse 31 pa on the same chapter of Romans chapter 8. If God is with you, who can be against you? Now, how do you fight your battles? Do you surrender to sin? Sa example, Pastor Gab, do you surrender to your acts? Resist. 
alone, you will fail. But by the enabling of the Spirit, you can. If you truly be, if you truly, if you are truly in Christ, we also receive His power to live according to the Spirit. And on the next verses, we will be able to see how does it look like to live according to sinful nature and to live according to the Holy Spirit so that we can compare, we can evaluate ourselves. On the next verse, those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what the nature desires. When you say sinful nature or flesh in other translations, set their minds on what the nature decides. These are the people who are not in Christ. The way they live their lives are according to their flesh. Kung unsa lang ilang ganahan. Kung sa ilang na, okay, ganahan ko ni Buhaton. I don't care kung na masuko. I don't care if this is against God. According to their earthly desires. Now, the question is, do we set our minds on what the nature desires? That's why I told you a while ago, this is the moment where we try to evaluate our lives. Let us try to evaluate our lives, our personal walk. Are there things in my life that does not glorify God? Evaluate your relationship. Am I glorifying you, God, on this? If not, repent. Ask God, help me, Lord. Ask God how to live according to His Spirit. You know, you know what's hard for us people. I'm not sure if sa lain po nga countries, but what's hard for us? What um, ako na observe? It's hard for us to acknowledge our sin. It's hard for us to realize our sin. And I was able to read to to read from A. W. Tozer. I I think he said this. We even kill our conscience by doing the sin over and over and over again. Kabantay ka, when you first, kanang first ni mo buhato ng sala, mo rin siya, mag-guilty pa ka, makonsensya pa ka, ay, kalain na niyong eh. Pero kanunay ni mo siyang buhaton, mawala ni mong konsensya, oy. Mawala ni mong feeling of guilt. Okay naman di, ay. Dili man di siya, yung nga makakonsensya. Because you are trying to kill your conscience. By doing the sin over and over and over again. So setting our minds is a choice. My question is, are you setting your mind right? Setting our minds give us the idea kinsa tong atong focus atong kinabuhi. Are we focusing on God or are we focusing on our desires, on our personal desires here on earth? And the next verse continued. Those who are in Christ, who believe in the power of Christ, who believe that Christ lives within them, have set their minds on what the Spirit desires. That those who belong to God have also focused on what God desires. Even if sometimes we fail God, we get back up and continue to serve God. Kung baga sa Bisaya pa, sa atong padulungan, madagma manta, barog, papha, o panayon. Ayaw nagbalik. Continue. These people who are in Christ submits to the will of God. They don't think of their own personal interest. They only think and focus on glorifying God. In times of struggles and pain, these people get hurt. But ang ilang gipili, they chose to kneel down letting God know that, Lord, I cannot do this alone. And the moment that they stand up, they know that God is with them. Sa Bisaya pa, Bisan asa Lord, basta kuyog ta. Maubita, when we pray, we say, Lord, let your will be done. It's not going to be our will, but God's will. Lord's will. The King's will. If you if you can try to imagine Jesus Christ as your master, as your King, as as your as your Lord, bisag unsa iyang ingnon, you will follow. And if you try to question all His commandments, if you try to question just one commandment, then let's try to evaluate ourselves. Am I really part of His kingship? Am I really part of that kingdom? Am I, am I, am I really living by His will? Am I really following Jesus Christ? Am I really in Christ? Is Christ in me? Evaluate ourselves. And on the next verse, The mind of sinful man is death, 
but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. This is not a consequence, ha? but the mind of the sinful man is equivalent to death. Okay? That those who are in Christ are already dead spiritually. These people who are not in Christ will have a hard time to understand or accept the will of the Spirit because for them, this is foolishness. To deny ourselves, that's foolishness. To not think of ourselves and focus only to God, for them, that's foolishness. If you say that you believe in Jesus Christ, yet you question, as what I've mentioned a while ago, if you try to say that I believe in Jesus Christ, yet you question His commands, then try to evaluate yourself. Try to ask again, am I doing this for my own glory? Or I am doing this for God's glory? Well, the Spirit is life and peace. On the same verse, the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. This is once again not a consequence of being in the Spirit. That those who live according to the Spirit is equivalent to life and peace. Diba once we, bap- once we get baptized, after na tumas submerge sa water, we are also raised and now we are called born again. Right? That we have a new life in Christ. This new life in Christ grants us peace with God. If you try to read chapter 5 verse 10, let me just read that to you. For if, when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to Him through the death of His Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through His life? For if, when we were God's enemies. See, we were once God's enemies. God's enemies. And if we will continue to wage war against God, this earthly life will continue to become hopeless. There will still be an empty space in your heart. Bisan unsa pang paningkamot nga mabuutan ka. If you are not in Christ, if imong focus is imong kaugalingon ra, there will still be an empty space in your heart. Because the God who gives life and peace is not in you. The word peace here also means freedom from worry. You see, if you choose to walk by the Spirit, if you choose to live according to the Spirit, why would you worry if you know that you are with God? For me, there are times that I worry, but a lot of times I am reminded that God is with us. Be san as a Lord, basta kuyog ta. Even the start of this pandemic, um, ako nawadaan kong trabaho, but, but then again, my peace is in Christ. Because um, for us, sa mga sa kong wife, as we were praying, the impression of God is to just be still. And as as we were talking about this, as, as me and my wife are talking about our experiences, indeed, God never left us. He was faithful since the start of our relationship. So why would I worry now? Kung sa stugod pala sa mga relationship, God is with us. And on the next verse, the sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. As mentioned a while ago, we were once God's enemies. And those people who are not in Christ, who focuses or set their minds into the flesh, are hostile to God. Nga bisan, unsa pang paningkamot ni mo nga mo live a godly life, a righteous life, if you are not in Christ, you will not be able to do it. We can't do it. Wa man gaya, nabuhat sa una. Samot na karun. Remember that we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And I just want to add this in 1 John 1 8. One John one eight. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If you say that you are able to live a holy life, claro kaya, without Christ, you deceive yourself. And on the next verse, Paul said, And those who are controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. By the flesh or sinful nature, those who live according to their sinful nature cannot please God. When you believe that you are in Christ and Christ in you, you follow the will of the Spirit that therefore pleases God. But these people who are controlled, who are living according to the sinful desires, can can never bring glory to God. 
but they only think about themselves about what they can gain paano naman ako how about me how about my happiness paano naman yung gusto ko ba tagalog na ha they only think that this is what i want this is what i need puro me 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 sabi nga ni Jesus Christ deny yourself And these people cannot please God because they cannot submit to His will. Thus, they cannot please God. They cannot bring glory to God. A life of assurance in accordance to the Spirit. And now we have a choice. Either we live a life in accordance to the Spirit or we live in accordance to the sinful nature. Evaluate yourselves. Evaluate our lives. I want you to choose here. A life of choice. Am I living by the Spirit or by the sinful nature? The Spirit, a, li- a life according to the will of the Spirit, a life in peace, no longer enemy of God, pleases God. Do I submit to the will of the Spirit? Or how about this? Am I living a life that pleases God? And I just want to ask this. It's a personal question to you guys, for us, for us believers. Is God my master? or my or or is it my old self my old desires my sinful desires is my master or the world is my master try to choose evaluate yourself as what i said transformation people will be able to see the truth in what you believe by what you pursue and what you produce now choose your master this world or god if you are still living by the sinful nature And I can say to you, repent. Know that as long as ginhawa pa ta, repent. 1 John 1.9 For if we confess our sins to God, He is faithful and just to forgive us. And it takes a lot of courage in front of God to admit our sins as what I've mentioned a while ago. That's the problem. That's where the problem is. The acknowledgement of our sins. It's, 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 it's kind of hard for us to acknowledge our sins, to really admit our sins in front of God. But here, He is faithful and just if we confess our sins. Ask God for help on how you can live a life with Him. And on the next verse, Paul continued, You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. You who are not controlled or not joined or not in association by the sinful nature. And there's this condition, if, if the Spirit of God lives in you. Actually, in Greek, it, it adds, if surely the Spirit of God lives in you. If surely. This passage actually help us to evaluate our lives. And in order for us to really help understanding this passage, let's try to read 2 Corinthians um, 13.5. 2 Corinthians 13.5. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you unless, of course, you fail the test? Evaluate yourselves. Examine yourselves. Okay? Try to check yourselves whether you are in faith. Test yourselves. Am I really? Am I really living by His will? Am I really following God? Am, is God really my master in my life? Try to evaluate. Try to ask that to yourself. Are there any sins that I need to confess to God? Are there any sins that I continue doing until now? Because my friend, in, in verse 1, he said, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And then here on this verse, If the Spirit, if surely the Spirit of God lives in you. Let us be sure that we are in Christ. And on the next verse, But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. Your body is dead, powerless, ineffective because of sin. That gives us an idea that no amount of work that our body can do to grant us justification. That we can still experience the effect or the limitations of sin. But for those of us who believe in Christ, who are in Christ, your spirit is alive. 
because of the righteousness that was given to us. And on this last verse is a promise. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. As the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead who is now living in you, he will also give life to your mortal bodies to continue to live in him. If we truly believe in Christ, if we truly believe in His power of salvation, if we truly believe in His power to follow His will, we will walk in the Holy Spirit. Friends, choose a life in Christ. Therefore, we have a choice. And I hope that we choose to live a life in Christ. An assurance that we are no longer condemned if our life is in accordance to the Spirit. And we have a choice, a life by the Spirit or a life by the sinful nature. Am am I going to serve God or am I serving the world? Am I serving myself? And I hope that we choose to live a life in Christ. We kneel down because we know that we can't do it. That we acknowledge that we need Him. That we acknowledge that He is our King. And as we stand up, we stand up knowing that we are in Him. That He is in us. And knowing that our life is by His will. That is why we end our prayer, Lord, let Your will be done. A life in Christ. A life by His will. God bless you all.